Mike McLean and welcome to episode 21 of the Mark 1 Escort Iris 2000 Reassembly. In this episode we're going to be fitting the door locks that you guys kindly recommended. We're going to be fitting the diff which has arrived as well from Selector Gearbox through GS Escorts. And we're also going to look at things like brake lines, uh, call pack, uh, anti-roll bar, all sorts of different stuff. We'll get on with some of the items right now. Right guys. Again, thanks very, very much for all your help and uh, guidance and ideas regarding locks for the Mark 1 Escort. Uh, I did try Motorsport Tools and they know they are looking at having them reproduced, but it's going to be a way off yet. So in the end, I decided to go for the MGB lock option. Because looking at the pictures on eBay and uh, and comments from forums... It just seemed like there would be a great straightforward fit and I've got to be honest they are that lock took 10 minutes to fit literally, literally 10 minutes to fit and all you've got to do this is that the one you haven't fit if the lock was to go in like that the very bottom pin just needs cut down about half the length and the pins need opened out slightly just to give a little bit more movement and then that simply fits into the hole now on forums, people were saying you need to file the door out. Well, I've got to be honest, I didn't have to file anything out on this door at all because the lock barrel is exactly one mil smaller in diameter than the hole in the door. So it fits in, it clips in perfectly. Once you've cut that bottom pin off, as I've just said, it then fits into the door and operates absolutely spot on brilliant there's only one issue these locks the only thing that holds them in place is these spring clips and they don't have a little peg anywhere that locates them into the door and stops somebody just coming along if they wanted to break in and grab an your lock with a pair of pliers and turn in the full lock to pop the uh, to pop your lock open and i am not happy with that and I'm certainly not going to leave it like that. So I've came up with an idea. And this is the idea I've came up with. So how am I going to get around this issue? Well, as I've said, I haven't had to modify the door. And I'm pleased about that. Because if I ever come across a good set of original locks. Or if Motorsport Tools eventually make the proper uh, new remanufactured locks. I may very well just swap them over so we've got the exact look. So I wanted to do something that would make these locks secure, but wouldn't uh, wouldn't change the car in any way. And this is what I've came up with. So you might be wondering what that's all about. Well, what I've done is, I don't know if you can see there, I've actually filed a flat spot using a very thin pencil file onto both sides of the barrel to allow one of these brackets to slide through the barrel and it simply goes through the barrel like that and it picks up on the screw up here that holds the door handle on. So now that lock cannot spin inside them pegs and the bracket can't spin because it's held by the screw in the top of the door. And I think that is as good as it's going to get. It's, you know, I've, I've left enough gap so this can slide in behind. So not only is it stopping the lock from spinning, it's actually securing the lock in the door further as well. So yeah, they just need primed and painted now and I can fit the two of them. Uh, and I think that's probably the best way around that uh, that little issue because I want it to make it secure. I mean, we all know if they want to get into your car, they'll get into your car. You know, they can break a window. There's loads of other ways they can get in. Uh, nowadays, they tend to just uh, trailer them away, I believe, drag them onto a tow truck and away we go. But... I'm a fir I, I firmly believe that if you can make it so it takes minutes to get into the car rather than seconds, then you stand a better chance of someone catching them. So, yeah, we'll do all we can to try and stop the uh, the assholes that steal cars. So this is obviously something I've put together, and I would imagine it'll be a temporary fix. I may very well leave them. I don't know. Uh, time will tell. When, uh, when the new locks come up, I might just get a set. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, that's how I've got round that little issue. And that is the bracket in question fitted in place. And as you can see, it's made quite a tidy job of it, I think, anyways. I've copper greased up the mechanism. I can show you now exactly how that works. 
So when I turn the key from the other side, as you can see, it's, it's, it is a decent, uh, a decent fit. Not really a lot to do to make that work. And you can just see the bottom pin there. Why I've had to, uh, why I've had to shorten the bottom pin because it bottoms out on that plate. The other one doesn't matter; it just sits over the top. But that's why we cut that uh, that pin down. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's uh, it's made it a lot more secure. Like I say, if they want in, they'll get in. But at least I've tried my best to make it a little bit more difficult for them. Now, some people did say their locks came with a little pin on that they had to file out on the door. Yours might, but mine didn't. So just be prepared that you might have to do something similar if you're worried about the security aspects of it. Uh, I mean, there's maybe two different type of locks. I don't know. These are the ones I got recommended. And yeah, they're a good fit. And overall, I've got to be honest, I'm happy with it. I'm impressed enough with it. Uh, so it is. If anyone's looking for uh, an alternative means of locking because they can't find a set of locks, this one is definitely a good one. I would recommend it, I would say. And before I forget, thanks very much to Ian Kilkenny who recommended these to start with and sent me the links for these locks. And for everybody else who helped with the lock situation, I really do appreciate everybody's help. I've had some fantastic comments. Uh, whenever I need help, you are always there with some fantastic ideas. And I hope some of the stuff I do helps you guys as well. That's what it's all about. So yeah, again, thanks very much. Another little job just complete. I finally fitted the anti-roll bar because I've been fed up with this sitting on my garage floor. Uh, it was a bit of a bugger to get in uh, as all anti-roll bars often are getting it located in both sides at the same time and they're not on. Yeah, a bit of a challenge. Good mate of mine, Steve Buchanan. He came over and gave me a hand to wrestle it into place. And uh, that's fitted now. And I've managed to find a money-saving tip instead of buying poly bushes. Good old cable ties, eh? Obviously, that's a joke. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the poly bushes coming and I can get that clamped up. Right, guys, a quick update on more new parts that have just arrived this last week. So, I've got the internal kick panels, which obviously go down in the footwells. These came from Aldridge Retrimming. Again, as with everything with Aldridge, it's always beautiful quality. They're, uh, they're certainly one of the best when it comes to retrims, I think. The only thing, again, that really annoys me, as I've mentioned many times on the channel, is they don't come with the fixings to put them in. That really, 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 uh, it, it does my head in how places supply things without the parts to fit them. But I've, I've nagged on about that before, so we'll move on. So then we've got the proper HT leads. These are the ones that will come through the side of the plug cover, down the side of the block, uh, through, the, through the throttle bodies onto the, uh, onto the coil pack which will be mounted on this bracket, which is also came from Retroford. So that will be mounted underneath the throttle bodies and will hold the coil pack that I'll show you in a second. So I've got that as well. We've also got some door switches, just little things like this I'm, I'm starting to make a list of because little things like this you tend, to, you tend to miss. So I've got door switches. I think they're getting fitted today. They came from eBay. The locks you've already just seen previously in the video. Obviously, I've got two. I've fitted one already. That's the second. Then we've got these. Now, I like the sound of air horns, but I don't want massive big trumpets in the front of the car. I just think it looks a bit chavvy. I didn't want two big trumpets and a compressor sitting there. So these are twin tone, but they're just a standard size. Air, um, well, they're a standard size horn unit, but they're air horn twin tones. Uh, and I think I should be able to fit them in quite easily and make them blend in without standing out at all because you know the black fronted and go behind the grill there's plenty of room for them so i've decided to go for them because i like the sound but again i don't want it looking daft so that's them they again they came from ebay i think they were only about 750. Um, then i've got a good a full set for front and rear of goodridge overbraid hoses the only issue here is i've already fitted the ends on the pipes i've fitted four ends on four of the pipes already and I fitted the wrong ends. These are obviously imperial because of the age and I've accidentally fitted metric ends which now means I'm going to have to go around and swap all them ends over but that's my own stupid fault. There's the coil pack I was just saying about. This came from um, TMS. This is our local motor space factor. Now these are about 60 odd quid in genuine Ford 
Um, this is a Delphi product from TMS and this was 35. So it's probably by the time we had postage on it's half the price. And for the miles it'll do, I'm not asked about having a, a genuine Ford item. I've also bought the Superflex bushes for the front anti-roll bar, but they're already on the car, as you'll see in a second. Uh, that's why I've just got the package in there. Now this, this is a Speedo cable, and it's big thanks to Lee Reynolds, who I've mentioned on the channel before. Lee's told me that if you were to go and buy the proper cable to, uh, to marry up a Type 9 gearbox to your rev counter, you're paying about 30 odd 40 quid. But if you go for a Mark III 2.8 Capri uh, cable, which is exactly the same length, Lee tells me, it's got exactly the same ends on, because it's not Escort and everyone hasn't jumped on the bandwagon, these are 11 quid posted. So thanks very much, Lee, for pointing that out. I've ordered one of them this week as well. I've got a connector set. These is for uh, in bits and bobs on the car where I just need to finish off some wiring, some little connectors, bits and bobs. That was only another eight quid, eight, nine quid, something like that. So we'll give them a try. And I bought a bag of bolts from our local bolt suppliers for various areas on the car. I think that concludes the parts I've just received this week. And I'm also expecting the diff and various bits from GSS Goats any day now. So yeah, we are making progress. So let's crack on with fitting some of these items. Another glorious day. And we all know what that means by now, don't we? Right, just a little bit of an update I've been doing today uh, while I've had the car out in the sun. So the first thing I've done is I've finally fitted the passenger side door lock. Uh, exactly the same as the driver's side, no, no difference, so there's no point going into any uh, major detail with that. Another little thing I've did is I've fitted the door switches, another reason why I wanted the car outside. And you'd expect that to be a straightforward job, wouldn't you? No, just like everything else with these things. The little plungers were about five to seven mil too long, so I had to cut the plunger down because it wouldn't allow the door to close properly. And then I had an issue with the actual screw head hitting the door. So I've had to use counter-headed screws on both sides. They're now clear, there's no contact. So that's both sides completed with that as well. Another little thing I've done is I've now got the poly bushes, super flex poly bushes for the roll bar, anti-roll bar, as I mentioned before. That's all now bolted in with new bolts. Uh, and another little thing I did with it is, as you can see, the bolts go up through the bracket and straight up through the um, through the anti-dive bracket into the brackets on the chassis leg. And if you tighten these bolts up, basically it would just deflect this plate, so you're not going to get a positive tire, a positive tension on them bolts. So what I've done is I've put little bits of stainless tube in behind the same stainless tube I made the uh, coolant hoses out of because it's fairly thick walled. So that when you feed the bolts through them, you get a good positive uh, tension on the bolts. It's just a bit crazy how we've got, I think it's I think it's eight M10 bolts holding the clamps onto the bracket, and the clamp is only held on, the the bracket's only held onto the car with four eight mil bolts. So it's you know it's a bit crazy, but it is what it is. So yeah, that's another little job done today. And finally, I fitted the coil pack, which mounts on the bracket just under the throttle bodies and the HT leads, which I've, I've uh, adapted the, coal, uh, the spark plug cover for them to feed through nice and neatly down through under the throttle bodies. So yeah, just a couple of little jobs I've got out the way today while I've had it out in this beautiful weather because we certainly don't get enough of it. Little update on today's progress. I've fitted all the flexible Goodridge hoses and I have had to actually change the way I did it because as you can see, the copper pipe comes in at the top from the caliper. Well, it did come in at the bottom. And when I put the flexible hoses in, the angles of the pipe was all over the spot. There were, there were it was just horrible. And, and when you tried turning the steering, they were rubbing on the, on the threads and, and it just, it was awful. And I thought, how can I get around this? And I thought, I wonder if they're supposed to go into the bottom. And it appears they do, because when you jack it up, when you put weight, onto the uh, onto the struts that angle of that pipe is absolutely perfect so 
I'm really, really happy with that. I've done the same on the other side and I've now obviously fitted the correct Imperial fittings that I should have done in the first place. I knew when I fitted the other ones that it wasn't right. I should have stuck with male stings. So that's the front and that's obviously the back. Same again, really straightforward, nice and easy. I had to flare this pipe here as well and put the proper end on. Again, I've done I've done that with the uh, the bench mounted flare and tool and mounted it to this frame, which was a bit tricky, but I got there in the end. So yeah, when, again, when the axle's jacked up, the angle of that pipe is again, so much better. So that's another little one out the way. And that's the that's basically the brake pipe system finished, to be honest. Uh, other than bleeding it, it's pretty much there. So a little job I've just completed is fitting the bonnet release spring. I bought the spring and it didn't come with this little clip. And when I've tried to find the clip, you can only seem to find the clip with the spring. And I'm certainly not paying another £29 for another spr spring and clip. So I came up with this idea, which is simply make your own. So basically I measured the outside diameter of the spring, which is 4 mil, And I formed that little bit of stainless stainless plate around a 4 mil drill bit as it happens because it's perfect diameter. Um, yeah, cleaned it up, fitted it with a stainless steel bolt and uh, that's an, a little job out the way. And the next little few jobs will probably be to take the grill off, connect the cable up to the spring, fit the horns, fit the, connect up the radiator fan, all the bits behind the grill, do it in one go while the grill's off. And then I don't have to take it on and off uh, loads of different times. So that'll be the next couple of jobs coming up very soon. Couple of little things just arrived today from GSS Goats. First off being these, the saddle pads. There's four of them in the pack. That means I can now get the axle clamped down properly onto the leaf springs, so that's good. At least that's uh, then bolted in for the final time. And the second bit, the bit I've been really looking forward to getting, I've finally got my diff, but what a hell of a job the lad has done of it. You can tell, looking at it, just how meticulous he is with things, how clean it is. I was expecting to have to paint this, and I don't even have to do that. It's even been painted. Every, everywhere I look on this diff, it's just top drawer. I haven't seen anything yet that I would think otherwise of. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, and I know it's done properly. It's been done by someone who does it all the time. So I know the backlash and everything's set far, far better than I would ever get it. So that's basically ready to drop into the axle. As soon as I get the axle bolted onto the leaf springs properly, I'm going to fire the new gasket on with a bit of sealer. I've got the nuts already waiting. I'm going to get that in. Uh, and then I just need uh, a drain plug and I can get some diff oil and get that filled up with full of oil. But yeah, it's had all new seals, all new Timken bearings. I think the Crown Wheel and Pinions 3.79, if I remember rightly. And then we've got an ATB LSD. Yeah. So, so happy with that. Absolute top, top job. Couple of little updates. The saddle pads are fitted. So they fit between the leaf spring here and the bottom clamp. You could go ahead, I suppose, and fit them anywhere in between here as well if you wanted, I suppose. But what you've got to take into consideration is this uh, distance here, this, this width here, is then going to lower the car by uh, probably a significant amount. And we've already got a fairly substantial, I think it's two inch lowering block. So I'm only fitting the saddle pads here, so I've only used two of the four. But that now means the rear axle is uh, permanently clamped down into position now. Hopefully for the last time, I hopefully won't have to do too much adjustment with that. I've took loads of me measurements and I'm fairly confident the axle is somewhere near where it needs to be. I've also fitted the anti-tramp bars. They're now bolted in properly and tightened up. So that's the axle fully bolted home. I've now spent a little bit of time and cleaned up the uh, face here on the diff casing because as you've seen the diff is absolutely gleaming so I've got to make the diff the same sorry the axle casing the same so that's now cleaned up ready to accept the diff so I'm now going to get my gasket get some sealer and get that diff lifted into place just a case of uh, sliding it into place putting the eight nuts on, talking up to, Haynes Manual says anywhere between 25 and 39 foot pounds, which is, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a, a variation there, but I'll probably go midway. I think I'll go for maybe 30 foot pounds. And then we need to slide the half shaft in. As you can see, I've already slid the half shaft out ready, just in case of sliding that back in afterwards. So I'll get on with that now.
Right, that's our gasket and a nice even thin layer of uh, sealant fitted to both sides. It's coming really handy this actually. If you buy a retro Ford sump, they come with a rather generous tube of sealant for the for the um, for the sump casing, and I've used this all over the car. It's coming really handy. So yeah, that's uh, that's nice to have. I will point out that although I probably mention certain companies on the channel, I don't get commission from any of them. I simply recommend companies that I find are really helpful and produce really good parts. That's basically the top and bottom of it. Well, I'm sure you'll all agree. That looks very different. Sorry, you're probably all staring at the screen now, shaking your heads. <laughs> yeah, that's that bolted in. Uh, I went round in a circular motion, tightened up the pressure evenly to pull the diff in evenly. Uh, went in intervals, eventually up to 30 foot pounds, which is now torque down till. So yeah, that's that fitted. It probably wasn't worth uh, video on in full because it is just a case of lifting it in onto the studs and putting the eight nuts and washers on. The nuts and washers came from Retro Bolts, another company I use a fair amount because I always find they send good quality stuff. If you get bolts from them, they're always the correct thread, they're always the correct pitch, etc. And you get the right amount. So yeah, that's, uh, that's where they came from as well. So that's the diff fitted and it's nice to see the uh, the sealant oozing out all the way around of the seal. Uh, not a hell of a lot, but just enough to see that I've got a good seal. So I'll wipe off the excess and that's that diff fully located. Now, another one of my viewers pointed out a little thing that's worthwhile doing and I'm going to follow his advice. And he said, when you put your half shaft in, put a little bit of sealant around your bearing so it seals into the carrier and also behind your retaining plate to stop any oil from the diff coming out into your brake assembly. So I am going to do that now. I'm going to put a very thin smear of, uh, of sealant around the bearing and, and the carrier and slide that shaft in. And that's uh, that's as far as we can go with the diff for now. We're uh, we're almost there with it. I just need that other back plate, as I've mentioned, and our, di our rear axle is uh, is finished. Well, guys, that's another video that's drawn to a conclusion. So I think going forward, you're going to find a lot of the video content is going to be mixed and matched, all sorts of different stuff. I haven't really got one particular area to concentrate on anymore. You know, like the axle, for example, the axle, as I speak now, is fully complete. Uh, underneath the bonnet is not far off complete. There's odds and sods to do all over the car. So now it'll be, you know, a little bit of work here, a little bit of work there. It'll be mixed and matched for the next good couple of episodes, I would imagine. So yeah, keep on watch, uh, keep watching if you want to see, obviously, the car coming towards a close and hopefully somewhere near completion, round about maybe end of August, early September, fingers crossed. Uh, and we can hopefully get it MOT'd, taxed, insured, all the rest of it and get some, uh, get some miles and roll and road done. So thanks very much for your support as always, guys. Thanks very much for the comments. Uh, like, like I've always said, you guys have helped me a lot along the way uh, with certain things, with your recommendations, the door locks, like you've just seen, is a prime example, and there's many, many more. So I'll see you very soon, guys, on the next one.